Hi, welcome back to Maker Mindset. We are in the fourth part in a five-part series that is going over the process of building an ND3 3D printer. If you never built a 3D printer, or if you're having problems with the printer you just built, then this video series is for you. So let's continue. We are picking back up on step eight, which entails attaching the timing belt to the hot end carriage. As you can see in the 3D animation, we're going to place the timing belt around the gantry, connect it to the hot end carriage, and adjust the belt tensioner. Here is the timing belt. It has teeth on only one side, as you can see here. The side with teeth should always be facing the gantry. Now, pick up the gantry. Place the belt on this gap here. And roll the hot end carriage on top of it. Here on this side of the gantry, there is a window through which you can see the pulley that is connected to the axle of the X axis stepper motor. The timing belt should go around this pulley. We are finally ready to attach the ends of the timing belt to the hot end carriage. You fold the tip of the timing belt like so and wedge it inside of this slit. There isn't much finger room here, so maybe you can use a hex wrench to help you center the timing belt in relation to the aluminum extrusion. Yeah, looks good. Now it's time to connect the other end of the timing belt. Whoa, whoa, where do you think you're going? Now you push it like this. You should always keep the belt centered. For the next task, we're going to need the second largest hex wrench from the ones that came with the printer. You should also pick up the largest hex wrench because we are going to use it as a lever to push the belt tensioner outwards and create the right tension for the timing belt. Just make sure that you keep the belt tensioner straight in relation to the aluminum extrusion as you tighten the screws. Let's do the final tug. And that's it. The timing belt seems to have a good enough tension. To the next step. On step 9, we will roll in the gantry on top of the two Z-axis 2040 aluminum extrusions. As you can see on the 3D animation here and from the title of the introduction, one would think that this step was going to be a breeze, just putting the gantry on top of the aluminum extrusions. But this will be a pretty involving step as we'll see in a second. As you may have already guessed, we're going to put the fully assembled gantry on top of the two 2040 aluminum extrusions. I put a clamp on the side just to make sure that the gantry is not going to roll all the way to the bottom. Now I'm going to speak about a well-known problem that has always plagued the Ender 3 printers since their inception. I'm talking about the hole located on the gantry where you are supposed to screw the Z-axis lead screw being a little too far away from the 2040 aluminum extrusion. This hole should be perfectly aligned with the axle of the Z-axis stepper motor. However, this hole is always one millimeter misaligned. 
Because of this, we're going to have to remove the Z-axis stepper motor and we'll need the mid-size hex wrench from the ones that came with the printer. We're going to have to construct some sort of 1mm thick spacer to put behind the stepper motor. I've heard of people printing a 3D spacer to address this problem, but if this is your first printer, then you can't print a spacer in order to build a printer, right? It's like a chicken and egg dilemma here. So we need to come up with something simple, doable and creative to address this problem. To begin with, we need to create a template of the stepper motor with the screw holes. We don't need anything high tech here, just a post-it and a pencil where we can draw around the stepper motor. Our spacer should have 37 millimeters of width by 44 millimeters of height. And we are going to build our spacer out of aluminum foil. We need to cut out a square sheet of aluminum foil and begin folding until we get close enough to the right size and most importantly to the right thickness. Our spacer will have a great advantage over a 3D printed spacer. Since it is going to be made out of aluminum, it will help dissipating the heat from the stepper motor to the aluminum frame of the printer. In addition, it is a material that is in every household and is very easy to work with. Now, roll your caliper very tight as you are doing the measurement because the aluminum foil will be squeezed by the screws when it is in its final place. Now you cut your template to size and stick it to your aluminum foil origami. With the large scissor, trim your aluminum foil spacer to the size of the template. Now borrow a paper hole puncher from the office Push your aluminum spacer inside of the paper hole puncher and then pull it out a little bit. If you do it like this, you should get holes on the perfect location. Like this. You see? Perfect. Okay, it looks alright and precision here is not critical because your spacer will be hidden behind the stepper motor. Now you can remove the template. Put both screws inside. And insert your spacer. Now you tighten the screws, but not too much, because we still want the stepper motor to move sideways. Pick up the Z-axis lead screw and place it inside of the lead screw coupler. Allow the lead screw to fall all the way in, then you pull it out just a little bit, like a millimeter. See, you need to install the Z-axis lead screw this way, because the lead screw coupler is designed to allow the lead screw to have a little give. However, if you allow the lead screw to fall all the way in and tighten the screws, that will make the whole system a little more rigid and hinder the lead screw coupler from doing its job. Now pull out the sleeve that is covering the Z-axis lead screw and put the fully assembled gantry on top. Now you turn the stepper motor left and right until the lead screw is aligned with the bushing with threads located on the gantry. You begin turning the lead screw and, in the process, bring down the gantry until it's about an inch from the motor. When you bring down the gantry, some grease may accumulate at the bottom. So you should pick up this grease blob and redistribute along the lead screw.
Now you can tighten the stepper motor screws. Finally, pick up the second smallest hex wrench from the ones that came with the printer and tighten the screws for this lead screw bushing with threads. Be gentle with those later screws. Done. On step 10, you are supposed to attach the top 2020 aluminum extrusion and put on the end caps. This, for a change, is going to be a rather simple step as we can see on the 3D animation. It will just require us to tighten four screws. You pick up the only 2020 aluminum extrusion that was left and keep the recesses around the screw holes facing up. For this, we'll need four M525 screws. We're going to use the largest hex wrench from the ones that came with the printer. There is only one trick to this task. The trick is to tighten all the screws, little by little, in several rounds. You should never tighten one single screw all the way in before working on the others. If you are not patient enough, you may cause warps and tensions on the printer frame that are bound to create problems for you in the future. For reasons that are going to be made clear in the future, you should pick up only one of the end caps and place it on the side of the 2020 aluminum extrusion that is at the top of the left leg of the printer. Beautiful! That's it for now. Next week is going to be the last episode of the series. Bye bye. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to watch the rest of this series, you can click on this link here on the top and at the bottom you have a link to a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks will be the best fit for you. So, we'll see you next time.